What isn't a deep, dark mystery is why the trite vagaries of newspaper horoscopes seem to chime with readers. Psychologists have identified what's known as the Barnum Effect, whereby people tend to believe statements are accurate for them personally, when in fact they're general enough to apply to anyone. We could devise a little experiment where we take your forecasts and then uh, give some of them straight, give some of them randomised, sometimes give Virgo the Pisces forecast, etc., and then ask people um, how accurate they were. Um, yes, that would be a perverse I mean, thing to do, wouldn't it? It would be, it, yes, but I mean, isn't that, wouldn't that be a good test? A test of what? Uh, well, how accurate you are. I think that your intention there is mischief, and I think what you'd then get back was mischief. OK, well, my intention would not be mischief. My intention would be experimental test, okay. sci scientific test. Well, but even if it was mischief, how could that possibly influence it? I think it does influence it. I think when, whenever you do things with astrology, intentions are strong. I'd have thought you'd be eager. I mean, I'd, I'd have thought you'd really... <laughs> See, what, the fact that you're not makes me think you don't really, in your heart of hearts, believe it. I don't think you, you, you really are prepared to put your reputation on the line. I just don't believe in the experiment, Richard. It's that simple. Well, you're in a kind of no-lose situation then, aren't you? Because... I hope so. Yeah. Regardless of Neil Spencer's concerns, I wanted to conduct a simple trial. We selected 20 people at random. We asked them to read that week's horoscope for Capricorn, but as a test, we said it applied to their own star sign. Not only do you have clever Mercury and ambitious Mars focusing on success. But now the Sun is at the same pivotal mid-haven angle of your solar chart. I have no idea what that means. Put simply, this means that this is your moment to go that extra mile to become the person you dream of becoming. Remember, however, that there will be others who want what you have and will stop at nothing to get it. Astrologers say this should fit just Capricorn and not the rest. But what actually happened? Yeah, maybe. To be honest, I felt there's some Mercury energy this week because there's a lot of arguments around and a lot of bad vibes. Um, yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense. What a lead well junk. It could apply to me as much as to the next person. Well, so, yeah, well, in a way, yeah. I, I am, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going on a flamenco course in Spain. That isn't necessarily pertaining to me this week. It's pertaining to me generally. Pile of rubbish. <laughs> the same number of people agreed that the horoscope was accurate for them as disagreed, and similar results are found with proper large-scale experiments. Technically, all but one of our group should have disagreed, namely our only Capricorn. Does it apply to you? Not at this moment, no. Am I taking this too seriously? I believe astrology misleads the public, denies scientific progress, and belittles our universe. There's a far richer way of looking at the cosmos. Astronomy is a triumph of the human intellect, a real science, constantly enriched by new evidence. Forget about the astrologers' charts with their constellations and planets moving in and out of this house or that house. Go into a real observatory and look at the Milky Way. Or go out into the country on a moonless night. Just lie on your back and gaze up at the stars. The heart-stopping sight you'd see is a hundred billion stars spinning through an expanding universe at a speed of a million miles per day. The light from some of the closer stars started its journey at the time of the dinosaurs, you're staring into a deep time machine. And yet, even as science unravels these natural wonders, our society is drawn to the slim pickings of supernatural belief. Half the British population now say they believe in paranormal phenomena. Over eight million of us have owned up to consulting psychic mediums. What I want you to do, Richard, for me is just to pull me out eight of them, please. 
Simon Goodfellow claims that, with these cards, he can use his psychic powers to tune in to the spirits of dead people around me. Seven, eight. These voices from the past can apparently give him a glimpse of my future. Lovely, Richard, thank you. Now, I feel he's giving me the initial G with his name. OK, now I feel with this man as well. I feel he was a family member. And I also feel very strongly with something to do with advertising that was in, something to do with newspapers with him as well. Now, I do feel with him as well. He's telling me about changes that are coming up in your life at the moment. I see total changes in how you're working to how you will be working in the future. The word Simon seems to be fishing for is retirement the obvious next step for most 60-somethings. Mm -hmm. It won't be as active and it won't be as active for you, and I do feel you have to grasp that when it... This could apply to anyone my age, but can Simon back up his more precise statements? What was that um, male relative with a G? That, that, what, what, what was that about you said earlier on? I do, right, the male relative with a G, right. I do feel with him, I don't feel he was a family member, but I do feel with him, right, it was some connection. I thought you said he was a family member, didn't Did you? I say that, did I, think I with a family so, yeah. member? Yeah. I think you did. Um, right, OK. Maybe. Let me see if I can uh, feel him here still. Yes, OK. Right, OK, then. What I feel with him, right, I feel as though there was a lot of things. It was a very strong character. Another feeling he's given me is very... It was very regimented as well, and I feel he served in some forces, in the forces in some in way forces. as well. But can you understand anybody with a military background that was connected to you? Well, I've got really nobody military in my background at all, mm. and mm. actually nobody beginning with G either. I don't right, know. OK. Spirit G has rung no bells, but now another voice comes from the ether. Oh, well, she's given me the initial E with a name. Now, I do feel with her as well. It's something to do with I feel a grandparent, and I want to give you an E-sounding name. Uh, my grandmother had a name beginning with E. At last, something I can identify with. Yes, sounding yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Tell me more about her. I mean, the lady, I do feel with her as well. She had a lot of cats. A lot of, of cats. It's cats. Perhaps not. She never had a cat. She hated cats, as a matter of mm. fact. Um, right. Uh, she liked dogs, but she hated right. cats. Well, I can understand. Not everybody, though. What you've got to also remember with this as well, not everybody can relate to everything that a reader will say. No. Not everybody. I mean, I've had people like yourself... Who have... Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. But here, I seem to get extraordinary excuses. People are quite sceptic. It's always twice as hard as a reader to read for them. Because normally people who come to these events come for a reason. And because, because they want closure and direction in their life. And also what you've got to think about, Richard, as well, some things are very raw to me. Psychics may believe they communicate with the dead, but I've seen no evidence for it. My concern is that, for some people, this superstitious nonsense can be far from harmless fun. There's a network of over 500 spiritualist churches across Britain. Here, Tuesday night is seance night. And we ask that we can now build a bridge between this world and the next so that we can once again go some way to proving that we survived death and that our loved ones in the spirit are forever with us. Amen. OK, I expect most of you are familiar with spiritualism, but those that... Spiritualism makes a nod to God 